the SAS video tutorial on turning a wide file into a long file. We'll also learn how to create a library in this uh, video as well. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create a new library, and this will be persistent so that we can not have all of our data always be blown away every time we close SAS because that's what the work library does. So I'm going to create a new library, and this is pretty simple to do. We're going to put use the word lib name. We're going to give it a name. I'm going to call it SAS dat. Why? Because it's my SAS data. Maybe I'll just call it all the way SAS data. And then I'm going to put in quotes here the path to where I want this to go. So on my machine, there's going to be users, EL Boone. Now on your machine, it will not be EL Boone. Uh, so keep that in mind. So documents, and let's see here. Uh, this will put us directly into the My Documents folder, semicolon. And so this will be easy to work with when we have things in our data in here. So I'm going to run this. And uh, notice that virtually nothing happens except in the log it says it created it. Uh, and so what I can do is I can actually move the data set that I'm interested in into here. Now, how do you do this is actually create a new data set. So I'm going to do data. I'm going to call it in here SAS data dot cycler. Okay. This is going to be the data frame that's going to come or it's going to create, and I'm going to use the set, this is the set where it's coming from, the cycler data set that I've already have read in, because I've read in the cyclercpk.csv data, which is linked in the repository below, and it's actually in my work library. So if I come over here, you can see in the work library, there's already cycler, and there's race and race out from a previous video. Okay, so I'm going to take this, and I'm going to run this. So... And if, when I run all of this, this will actually give me a new data set that sits in this directory. And I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, so I've ran it. I look at the log. The log says it created the file. So now all I need to do is come over to Explorer. This is currently in work. You may not be able to read this, but this says work. I move up and notice that in here I have a file folder now called SAS data. And when I come into it, I can see Cycler in here because I've created this SAS data folder. And if I actually look on my machine, which I'll do here real quick, uh, I can go to my documents and you'll see here's where the data set sits. It's actually in my documents. So this I've created my documents to be a folder. That folder that SAS calls it is the SAS data. That's what I named the library. So anything that I put in this folder, SAS will see, and it will need to be prefaced with the SAS data dot and then the name of it. Okay, so let's keep going here. So if you remember, this data is actually in a wide format. There's CPK1, CPK2, CPK3, and CPK4. So the first thing I'm going to do is start peeling off the information that I want. And that becomes a little bit trickier. So we're going to actually do this across two videos. So just keep that in mind. So we've got a library. The first thing we're going to do is start peeling these off so that we have data sets that we can use. Okay, so, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to take and create our first time point, which will be, uh, I'm going to take the data, I'm going to call it, I'm going to leave it in work, I'm going to call it Cycler1. And what I want is I want to take the set, SAS, well, I'll store it in SAS data later, uh, so Cycler, and I just want this for the Cycler1 or the first time point. So if I look back at the data set, I want this for CPK1. So what I want to do is I actually want to drop the other columns. I don't actually want these other columns now. So I'm actually going to create a uh, new column, and then I'm going to drop these. Okay, so to create a new column, I'm just going to call this CPK. And this is going to be equal to CPK1. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the columns that I don't want. CPK1. CPK2, CPK3, and CPK4. Okay, now this will only have the first column in it. And we'll see this here in just a second when I run this. So I'm going to run this code and you'll see what it creates. And we'll look at the two data sets next to each other. So we're going to submit it. We look at the log. We see that it's created. We're going to come over here to our explorer and we're going to go to the work directory. 
Inside the work directory, you'll now see Cycler 1. If you notice, it has subject, age, gender, treatment, and CPK. If I come and look in the Cycler data set, you'll quickly see that I have subject, age, gender, treatment, CPK1. And if you notice, these values match across here. Okay, so I'm going to repeat this for CPK2, CPK3, and CPK4, which I'm just going to do with copy and paste. So hopefully you like copy and paste because that's what I'm going to use. So let's do this. I'm going to control C, control V, control V, and I'm going to change this. So this becomes CPK2, Cycler2, CPK3, Cycler3. So I'm creating these new data sets. I'm going to do it again for 4. So I have Cycler4 and CPK4. Now I'm going to run all of these, and you'll see them show up in the work directory over here as I run this. So when I run it, you'll see them pop up. You can look in them if you want. This is Cycler 4. If I were to compare this to the original Cycler data, you will see it's the values that were in CPK4. Okay. Now, I've actually lost a little bit of information, and I need to go back and refix this because now I no longer know which time period I'm in. So I need to create another variable in my data set. So keep that in mind. So we're going to come back here, and we're going to create another variable, which is time. So time is going to be equal to 1 in this case. Time is going to be equal to 2 in this case. Because remember, this is CPK2. That does mean at time 2. And just by changing the labels, we lost information. And that's why I'm purposely going back and making a big deal about it here. So this is time 3. And we're going to make another one called time. And we're going to make that equals to 4. Now when I run all of these, I can go back and look at the data sets and see what they look like. Hold on, let me highlight all these. Let's see what they look like. So we'll go back to Cycler 1, and now notice where time is. I have CPK and time 1. Uh, if I go to CPK Cycler 2, it has time 2 involved. So now I haven't lost that information. Now I have these four data sets, Cycler 1, Cycler 2, Cycler 3, and Cycler 4. All I need to do now is just stack them up. And in SAS, that's incredibly easy to do. If all the column names match, it's really, really easy to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create data, and I'm going to call this Cycler Long. But I'm actually going to put it in my SAS data folder. So I'm going to do SAS data, and I'm going to call this Cycler Long because it's in the long format. Do you have to call it long? No. It's just the name I pick, so it's descriptive of what I have or what I'm dealing with. And then all you do is you put the set names in. So I have Cycler1. I'm going to have Cycler2, if I spell it right, Cycler3, and Cycler4. Okay. And then I'm going to hit Run. And when I run this, you will notice nothing happens over here. And why did nothing happen over here? Because I'm in the wrong directory. But if I come up here and I go to my SAS data, you'll see here Cycler Long. When I double click on this, you will see my data and it has all of the data in it. So I have time one. If I scroll down, I have time two, I have time three, and I have time four. So all of the information is still here. I have the times as well as the CPK measurements, but now this data is in the long format, where long means that one row is one observation. Before, one row correspond to four observations. If we go back here and look real quick. So one row corresponds to four observations. The observation of time one, time two, time three, and time four. Here, one row is one observation. All right, so this is the video tutorial on how to do wide to long, and we're going to keep going on the next video.